But Joe Biden is not in charge of this. God is. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. Now to this. Critics say Biden and the woke mob are taking a swipe at Christians this Easter. This year, Easter Sunday falls on Transgender Visibility Day, which is traditionally on March 31st. But this year, not only did Fairfax County, Virginia, make an official proclamation for Easter Sunday, so did President Biden. I just want you to mark that in your mind. It is a divine judgment. But for Four years ago, we had a president who said this about Easter. We remember the suffering and death of God's only son and his glorious resurrection on the third day. On Easter Sunday, we proclaim with joy, Christ is risen. And today, we have a president so depraved who declares Easter as Visibility Day for Transgender. To everyone celebrating Transgender Day of Visibility, I want you to know that your president sees you. Jill, Kamala, Doug, our entire administration sees you for who you are. Biden was the first president ever to issue an official proclamation for Transgender Day of Visibility, and this was back in 2021. And in his proclamation this year, he said, quote, today we send a message to all transgender Americans. You are loved, you are heard, you are understood, you belong, you are America, and my entire administration and I have your back. When you see all of this transgender activity and when you see them want to make laws to protect transgender identity and you know it is absolute and total and utter insanity you know we've reached the reprobate mind people can't think reasonably which means there's no way back to sanity i'm just very happy that we're recognizing uh, a community that has too often been pushed into the shadows and celebrating uh, yet another um, community within our diverse tapestry here in Fairfax County. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. We don't think that you are Satan, Mr. President, but we do think you're working for him. Joe Biden writes, now therefore I, Joseph R. Biden Jr., President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and the laws of the United States, do hereby proclaim March 31st, 2024, as Transgender Day of Visibility. The White House also banned religious themed designs from the White House Easter uh, Egg Art Contest, when the whole point of Easter is to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a religious holiday, a religious celebration. Uh, to celebrate the day of trans visibility in and of itself, is an affront to Christianity because the Bible says that God made man and he made woman. He made male and female. To say otherwise is to deny the truth, is to deny God's creation. Uh, also, to do it on Easter is blasphemous. You can even go back to the last trans day of visibility in 2023. He celebrated after Christian individuals were murdered by a trans person at the Covenant School in Nashville. And then the White House proceeded to go on and say that it was the trans community under attack, not Christianity. So I am so sorry that I believe that Joe Biden understands the optics of it and he is doing this intentionally and he is thumbing his nose at Christians and Easter and he's essentially spitting in the face of Christians everywhere. Our Congress and our Senate and uh, the people who run this uh, nation, whoever's behind the Wizard of Oz pulling the strings, that does not have the final sovereign say over this nation or over any nation in the world. So we are experiencing the judgment of God on our nation. It's not as if we're waiting for it. It's not as if it's nearby. We're in the middle of this judgment. It is interesting to see the great thinkers of The View calling Donald Trump blasphemous simply for holding a Bible. Watch this. There's an old saying. And it's a historical saying that, and I'm not sure who said it, when fascism comes to America, it will be waving a flag and holding a Bible. Take yeah. a look. There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah that's when pretty... fascism comes to America, it will be hold, waving a flag and holding the Bible. Yeah. That is what we are looking at right now. Yeah. Remember that in November. It's blasphemous. It's ironic and even laughable because within that same week they made that comment, President Joe Biden came out with that whatever you want to call it. Now mind you, this is a president who calls himself a Catholic and I'm pretty sure many Catholic people are furious by him doing this. After declaring Easter as Visibility Day for transgender, he says, I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work toward eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. And for some strange reason, according to The View, none of that is blasphemous. However, this is blasphemous. 
I used to wonder what in the world the reprobate mind could be, but we're living in the middle of it. It is insane, it is irrational, it is ridiculous, and yet it is so strongly in our culture that the society and its leaders are making laws to protect the people who are absolutely insane. That's the reprobate mind. So this is judgment. This is judgment. It's Holy Week, <laughs> and so I cannot say what I would like to say. Well, can I just quote that there's an old saying, and it's a historical saying, that, and I'm not sure who said it, when fascism comes to America, it would be waving a flag and holding a Bible. Take yeah. a look. Yep. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, yeah that's When fascism cool. comes to America, it will be hold, waving a flag and holding the Bible. Yeah. That is what we are looking at right now. Remember yeah. that in November. It's blasphemous. By the way, Sonny Osteen is supposedly a Christian, a Catholic Christian. And apparently she finds it entertaining to criticize a president who values the Bible in American values. I'm not particularly a MAGA or anti-Democrat type of guy. However, when a president calls for something like this on Easter, Resurrection Sunday, it needs to be addressed. It also shows that we have demon-possessed and demon-influenced people leading this country. It is no wonder why everything is upside down. How do you know when a nation is under judgment? How do you know? Can you be sure? And the answer to that is uh, you can know and you can be certain, and I'll show you how. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Any uh, nation, any association of human beings that constitute a culture if they turn away from the truth in unrighteousness, will receive the wrath of God. Now the wrath of God comes in many forms. There is um, eternal wrath, that's hell. There is eschatological wrath, uh, that, that would be all of the expressions of wrath in the book of Revelation, uh, all the judgments that fall on the earth that you know of in the time of the tribulation, that's eschatological wrath. Our Lord talked about that in His uh, Sermon on the Second Coming in Matthew 24 and 25. So there's the eternal wrath, eschatological wrath, there's a kind of cataclysmic wrath. Uh, m massive uh, earthquakes, uh, massive floods, the most massive being the Genesis flood where God literally drowned the entire human race with the exception of one family. Uh, there is sowing and reaping wrath, whatever you sow you reap. There are consequences to sinful behavior that are built into that sinful behavior. So there are, there are many aspects of the wrath of God and it works inexorably, it works inevitably and it works justly. But there's another kind of wrath, and that's what's being talked about in Romans 1. This is the wrath of abandonment. This is the wrath of abandonment. This is historical. In Acts 14, the Bible says God allowed all the nations to go their own way. The history of the world is the history of nations going their own way and consequently experiencing the wrath of divine abandonment. And that is what is in view in Romans 1.18, the wrath of God revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known about God is evident within them, for God made it evident to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes, His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. This is the perfect place on the planet to to connect with that, right? God by His creation has put Himself on display to the degree that His eternal power and divine nature are manifest and anyone who rejects Him is without excuse. And men do and nations do and cultures do and that's the cycle of human history. Even though they knew God, verse 21, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks because they became empty in their speculations, their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible men and of birds and four-footed animals and crawling things. They'll substitute anything for the true God, including animals. 
idols of all kinds. So what you have here is the wrath of God unleashed all the time through human history upon every people that suppress the truth in unrighteousness, the truth concerning God which may be known by the creation. And chapter 2 of Romans says, by the law of God written in the heart, so they're also without excuse. They reject what is revealed. They know there must be a God. They don't honor Him. They don't give thanks. They become empty in their understanding, and their foolish heart is darkened. They profess to be wise, but they are actually fools, and they exchange the, cor the incorruptible God for some other deity of their own making. Then verse 24 is the key, therefore. What happens when a nation abandons God? Therefore, God gave them over. This spells out what this wrath is. God gave them over. Now remember, this is historic. This is not looking at the future. This is looking at history. God gave them past tense over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. When this wrath goes into place, the first thing you will see is a sexual revolution. When God abandons a culture, you will see them sink to a low level of lust and impurity and the dishonoring of their bodies. The first thing that happens when a nation is under judgment is a sexual revolution. Verse 25 says, reminding us why it happened, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So look back to 1970, 1980, and remember when the sexual revolution began. That was step one in the abandonment of this society by God Himself. Step two comes in verse 26. For this reason, again looking back at verse 25, because of their rejection of God, for this reason God gave them over to a degrading passions, for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. Verse 27, in the same way also the men abandoned their natural function of the woman, burned in their desire toward one another, men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own person the due penalty of their error. When God abandons a society, the first thing that happens is a sexual revolution inevitably followed by a homosexual revolution, and you have it described in verses 26 and 27. And interestingly enough, it starts with the female side of that and lesbianism because when God abandons a nation, the instinct, the strongest human instinct there is, the instinct of women mothering their children is perverted. This is that severe a blow, this level of judgment on human culture and human society. And then you have the male homosexuals in verse 27 committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. There's an immediate penalty and you would remember it as the AIDS epidemic. It's built in. It's a venereal disease that is built in because that kind of behavior will have built in its own punishment as well as being evidence of the abandonment of God. And why does this happen? Because they didn't see fit to acknowledge God any longer. Verse 28, they, they keep going back, these verses, to the reason. They rejected God, they rejected God, they rejected God. First there's a sexual revolution followed by a homosexual revolution, verse 26 and 27. Then look at the middle of verse 28. Here's step three. God gave them over to a depraved mind. A depraved mind is a mind that doesn't function. Uh, sometimes it's translated reprobate mind. But the Greek word means non-functioning. That's when you're a man and you think you're a woman. It's a kind of insanity. And, and it's an insanity that is such an insanity, it, it begs the issue of reason to even think people would do this. The reason people are doing it is because they are under divine judgment. God has let them have a reprobate mind. So when you see all of this transgender 
activity, and when you see them want to make laws to protect transgender identity, and you know it is absolute and total and utter insanity, you know we've reached the reprobate mind. People can't think reasonably, which means there's no way back to sanity. There's no way back. And because it is a divine judgment on them, God doesn't interrupt the course of their thinking down this path of sexual revolution, homosexual revolution, to the kind of insanity that we see with transgenderism. I used to wonder what in the world the reprobate mind could be, but we're living in the middle of it. It is insane, it is irrational, it is ridiculous, and yet it is so strongly in our culture that the society and its leaders are making laws to protect the people who are absolutely insane. That's the reprobate mind. So this is judgment. This is judgment. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not be envious toward wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in Him and He will do it. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret because of Him who prospers in His way, because of the man who carries out wicked schemes. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil doing, for evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord, they will inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked man will be no more, and you will look carefully for his place, and he will not be there, but the humble will inherit the land and will delight themselves in abundant prosperity." Wow! I could sum that up by saying, don't watch Fox News. When you get to worrying about things, read Psalm 37. Amen? This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.